morning. Good evening. Glad you're all here. Thanks for coming. Hello to everybody online. Thanks for joining us. Ready?
ready to break some chains. Woo!
back. doing man, some amazing work, man. Absolutely amazing work. So, um, excellence does not happen by accident, and coming here early and listening to them all uh, rehearsing and uh, rehearsing again and, you know, just attention to detail uh, really shines through when you guys are up here on stage. So, anyways, just want to kind of give you guys a two thumbs up, man. normal routine, right? Because usually I come up and do my world famous announcements after the first song. But, Pastor Frankie and Heather are out gallivanting around North Georgia on that motorcycle. <laughs> so, um, but hey, I hope you guys are watching. I hope you're having a good time. Uh, catch a little bit of break. And, um, you know, just, uh, I kind of come back and, and be just that much better, that much stronger to, uh, you know, take this church to the next step. So enjoy your time off. Uh, with, the, with that said, we'll just kind of hold the fort down until they're gone. Uh, just so you know, I'm not the pastor, right? I, well, I'm kind of like the associate pastor, right? I haven't looked that up. Somebody, somebody's like, oh, you're the associate pastor. I was like, no, I'm not. I, I went to my... Church Google, and I Googled it, and it sure as heck, yeah, I'm killing it. Church, since you pastor, so, 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 yeah, you know, and, you know, Frank is the pastor, right? Like, he's he's the dude that's been to school, he's got two master's degrees, and theology, and counseling, like, he's, like, super smart dude, and then you got me, right? Business degree. Totally maxing out, like the maximum ability of that online degree that I've snatched up, right? But anyways, nonetheless, I'm here. You guys are stuck with me. And we're going to transition to the world famous announcements, right? So first and foremost, tomorrow morning we have the fundraiser for Deb, right? If you don't know Deb, Deb runs Deb, Deb's hair hut, right? And she's been in the hospital now for, what, over 40 days? Wow. Yeah, yeah, and her business has been closed, and you know she's been coming to church here. She's been doing the the twelve step program. She's been pretty pretty active, and then you know she got ill, and you know essentially her business hasn't been open in you know almost two months now, right? So in typical RCBC fashion, we want to help, and the best way that we can help is pull the community together. Uh, do a fundraiser. Use what God's blessed us with. That's right. Everybody gets a great breakfast. Uh, you know, there's no specific dollar amount for a plate of food, but all proceeds, oh, not all proceeds, every cent that's dropped in any of these buckets or the gas tank, that all gets packaged up and given to death to help her uh, get back on her feet after, you know, this, this uh, unfortunate run of uh, bad health. So anyways, tomorrow morning, the breakfast itself is from 8.30 to 10.30, and then we're going to have a short church service, and then we're going to go over to the Beaver Bar because, you know, again, we're in the community, we're a biker church, there's a bike show going on out there, uh, and the guy that's hosting it heavy from Midwest Cycles, um, you know, he's got, we, we got our tent out there, so it's a great mission field, right? So we're going to go out there, promote the church, invite a bunch of people back here for church service next week. Okay, so if you're looking for something to do, if you want to volunteer and help out with the breakfast, right, we will be here at 7 o'clock in the morning, okay? Sure. 7 I'll probably be here earlier, right? Uh, just to get the grill out and stuff like that. Um, and and we we'll gotta set up and get the burners going and mix pancake and crack 240 eggs and there's a lot of things that go behind the scenes. So if you're looking to volunteer, please by all means come here. And again, I'll be here at 6:30. Uh, but if you know any time's really good. Uh, because we need people to take out the trash, we need people to hang out afterwards and clean up and wipe tables down and grills and there's a, a, a lot of stuff that goes on. So come early, 
come later. Uh, but the important thing is, one, you come, and two, if you want to help, that's awesome. Just by donating and dropping some money in that gas tank, it's helping. But if you also want to serve, there's an opportunity, and just show up, and we'll put you to work, okay? Uh, the, the Beaver Bar, they were supposed to have this bike show last week. It got rained out. We're having it this week. Uh, I already went up there, the tents pre staged and Ken, um, I'm just wondering if you could go up there in the morning, uh, and if so, let me know after church, don't let me know after church, and, but we do need a couple volunteers to go up there and kind of man the RCBC table, uh, and also finish putting up the tent and stuff like that, but that's a bunch of logistical stuff that we can talk about after church, so anyways, let me move on to the rest of the world famous announcements. Uh, tomorrow's a pretty busy day, right? So pancake breakfast, beaver bar, and then 6 o'clock p.m. Every single Sunday, we have a 12-step program right here at RCBC. Uh, it's hosted by um, uh, Buckeye and Bill? Bill. Yeah. Bill. Buckeye and Bill. And uh, they're, they're not here tonight, but nonetheless, they, they run it. But it's been a great success since we've started this. And uh, if you know somebody or you're looking to get plugged into a program, come on out at 6 p.m. It starts, and again, every single Sunday. Next week, uh, first official week of Bike Week, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes, they're already here. They're already in town, right? <laughs> they, they, the ones, you know, from out of town, right? Uh, some are very well behaved and some, like, yeah. Less than very well behaved, okay? But, um, you know, next week, Saturday, um, we're going to be doing Bruce Feener's um, memorial service, okay? So that's Saturday at 2 o'clock right here. Uh, please come. Bruce has been a longstanding member of the church. Uh, great, great individual. And uh, this is, you know, obviously doing a celebration of, celebration of life for Bruce is um, something that we do, right? And his daughter, uh, stepdaughters would be here, and I believe some other uh, family members as well. So uh, two o'clock for Bruce. Then the next part of Bike Week really is Willie's uh, on March 7th, that's Thursday. Uh, RCBC's out there, and we could talk a little bit more about that next Saturday. But again, if you're looking for a reason to serve, or looking to serve, and looking for something to do, now, going out to Willie's, again, that's our mission field, man. We're bikers. There's a big chopper show going on. Why wouldn't we be out there, right? So anyways, if you're looking for something to do, come on out, and we'll get you plugged in there, and you can help serve. Prayer requests on the tables. We've got 3 by 5 cards. We've got pens. We've got napkins. Whatever you want, you can write it on your hand. You can text it to my wife. She's back there. Plus, we have a little basket up front. Uh, inside the foyer. If you got somebody that needs prayer, please write it down, put it inside the basket, and hand it to Jen. We'll pray at the end of church service, and the prayer team will cover it at a later date as well. All right? Ties, donations. Uh, we like to pay our light bill, but you know what? God's been making this thing happen since we started, what, eight years ago or so? And uh, But we do like... Um, or we, we do like to parallel bill, and we do have to talk about tithe, right? It's biblical, right? It's just one of those things. If it's on your heart to tithe or donate um, to the church, we have a couple of receptacles in the back, and we've got a gas tank up front inside the foyer, and uh, we also have uh, the ability to tithe online. If you go to www.rcbcdaytona.org, um, just look where it says, I think, giving. And click on that and follow the instructions. So, enough about that. I see a couple new faces. And if you're new here, please sign our wall before you leave. Okay, there's some markers out there. Um, and what we do is we just ask people to sign walls and leave their mark. Uh, the wall's getting a little crowded, but feel free to sign anywhere on this wall on this side as well. Please silence all your cell phones. Because I don't have any corny jokes to say if one goes off. Um, so that's about that for all the announcements. You guys see that up there with the Bible studies. 
And with that said, do me a favor, look to your left, right, front, back, give your neighbors a howdy, head nod, a handshake, oh, fist bumps. Watch your destiny of my church was back in here. Woo! I see you. I know. I love you. I can't So, let's jump right into tonight's service. So, the title of tonight's message is... Uh-oh. It was... Hey, guys. That laptop up there? There we go. Tripping over the truth, right? Tripping over the truth. What does tripping over the truth mean, man? Well... Uh, I read a book a couple years ago called The Power of Moments. It was a book written by two brothers named Dan and Chip Heath, right? And they were just, they, there was, they, the, the, the book was specifically about how decisive moments in people's lives, one specific time, and I know everyone here can sit there and think about a time that they seized the specific moment and things turned out amazing, right? It was like, wow, that, that was one of those magical moments where I had this, this vision and insight and something really cool happened. I think also everyone here could probably think about a point in time where it was the complete opposite. There was a specific point in time that you made a decision Right? That you made a decision that had very negative impacts on your life for a significant amount of time, right? Yeah. I'll raise both hands on that one, right? So, but with inside this book, they're talking about, you know, various different things, and I'm like, oh, this is a cool book, you know, and, and I was reading for work, and I came across this one story. And I'm going to try to weave this story into a very powerful message for, for everyone because I, am, I it, it's resonated with me, so hopefully it pulls off, pulls this off, okay? But, you know, the power of moments is, th this specific moment that I'm going to talk about is going to happen in Bangladesh. So we're going to get to that in a second, okay? But, in typical military fashion, before I do anything, I have to tell you guys what the task is and what the purpose is, right? The military, you have to have a task, you have to have a purpose. If you have a task and you have a purpose, you have direction, and you can do some pretty amazing things with very little guidance beyond that, okay? So, the task will be to talk about, or, and for you all, when you leave here, to know the types of sin. I didn't know this until I started this lesson, so we're going to go on a pretty cool journey, and maybe there's some biblical scholars in here that knew all this, right? Sit back, and, and I'm sure you're going to learn something too, but there's three types of sin. you got inherited sin, imputed sin, and personal sin, okay? And... The purpose, why do I think this is important? Because to help us better understand why we and others sin, right? If we can understand the why behind that, perhaps, just perhaps, we can put something in place to prevent us from sinning. Mm -hmm. Frank has talked about guardrails before, right? We put these guardrails up. But if you don't know why or how uh, in, in, in depth, how are you going to put up things to, how are you going to put those guardrails up there to prevent yourself or others from sinning? Okay? We do not sin so, uh, okay, so we do not sin so we can become better followers for Jesus Christ. Right? Mm -hmm. And it's pretty cool. I typically have my notes here, and I don't even use this, so they kind of caught me off guard. Good job, guys. You got my notes up there on the screen, and um, make my life easy. I appreciate it. So, um, Bangladesh, where is it, right? So, you got Miramar, right? On the right, you got Burma, Laos, Thailand, Camb Cambodia, and then Vietnam, right? right? And then on the left, you have India. 
And sandwiched between them two is a country called Bangladesh. All right? So, Bangladesh's flag, are you guys clicking it or am I clicking it? What's going on? You guys are clicking it? Okay. I'll give you guys a signal. I swear I tested it earlier. So, up to the left, right, that is the Bangladesh's flag. Pretty creative, big red dot, kind of like the Japanese flag, but with a green background. Uh, in Bangladesh, the capital is Dakar, or Dekka, rather, De Dekka. Um, the picture below is a picture at nighttime, because you pretty don't, much don't want to see it during the daytime, right? Yeah. But below is a pretty swoopy, probably Photoshop picture of Bang or the, the capital, okay? And what it probably really looks like, next slide, is that. That's what it looks like going to daytime, all right? So why, why are we talking about Bangladesh, all right? So Bangladesh has a uh, water crisis, okay? The, the country has about 165 million people within its population, and 68 million uh, have lack of access to clean, potable water. Okay, uh, and it's not just it's it's not just the poor people either. This it, it impacts uh, all levels of uh, the demographics within within that country. Okay, next up. So there's a bunch of companies out there. Next slide, please. That work, and, and not just Bangladesh, but, you know, a, a lot of places within inside the African continent, okay, uh, to bring clean water to remote areas, right? Because could you imagine, like, it, it doesn't take, I, I think, like, a, a, you know, a PhD in health to understand that if you don't have access to clean, potable water, that there's going to be a lot of negative effects um, throughout villages, uh, poor health, uh, premature, premature death, uh, and a lot of um, not just surface level illnesses, but deep, deep illnesses, right? Yeah. So a lot of companies invest millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars into these initiatives to bring clean water to these countries, right? All right, so, next slide, please. So, you have one big corporation that said, hey, you know what, we're going to change the lives of a village. So, before they spend millions and millions and millions of dollars, they did a study, right? They sent a team out there to do a study with inside the village and figure out why uh, people are getting so sick. Right, and one is okay, dirty water. Right, but why is the water dirty? Right, is it is it the mineral deposits inside of water? Uh, is it sanitation? Is it a combination thereof? And really, what they came down to was two things. One, um, it is some of the mineral deposits. A lot of the wells weren't dug super super deep. Right, and then the other part was is a lot of the water that was coming through their their villages. Right. The sanitation, right? And I don't know who here has been to other countries, but I'll tell you what, man. I've been to quite a few different countries, uh, to exotic places like Iraq and Afghanistan and Bosnia. And I'll tell you what, there's a lot of places that have open sewage, man. Yeah. Like, like in, in these cities, like cities with open sewage, man. It's yeah. like it's absolutely mind-boggling that these cities have been around for hundreds and hundreds of years, if not centuries. And they still have open sewage, right? So this study happens, and they come back, and they come up with a plan, and they say, hey, you know what, boss? Uh, I think we can really move the needle by um, uh, building bathrooms for the villages. Next slide. He said, okay, how much is it going to cost? It's going to cost a lot, right? So they, they bring in their investors. They have millions of dollars set aside. They hire this 
robust team. The team gets trained. They jump on an airplane. And they go over to Bangladesh to this remote village. Next slide. And they proceed to start building bathrooms. They're going to change the way these people live. It's going to be a miracle, right? They're going to, their health is going to start to, to, to improve, their quality of life, all of these great benefits, right? Next slide. That is a picture of one of the latrines um, that they built. All right, so each family is getting these these bathrooms, okay? The the teams feel pretty good about themselves. They're high fiving each other. I mean, look at this, man. They built one of these for every single family in that village. How awesome. Yeah. They get on a plane, they fly back. You know, and just like anything, if you're gonna invest a bunch of money. It's, it's called an intervention, right? That's the intervention piece, right? Now, the intervention is, is built. It's in use. Now they're going to sit back and they're going to watch these health uh, issues decline. They're going to see the quality of life raised. And all these scientists that are getting paid big dollars are sitting back and are looking at the data. Next slide. It's a huge failure. What happened? They, they're like, we don't understand. We did a study. We got some really smart people. We went out there. We threw a bunch of money at it. We built these amazing outhouses, right? And they're not using them. So what they do is they hire a guy named Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Next slide, please. So Sherlock Holmes goes out there with this pipe and magnifying glass, and he investigates. He starts talking to all the villagers, right? And the elders, and he brings different people in, and um, he, a, a picture starting to be painted to this guy. And one, one of the reasons why the people aren't using it is he said, this is nicer than my house. Why am I gonna go use the bathroom? Next slide. To them, this is actually a million dollar bathroom that I Googled on uh, Google, right, on the internet. So to, to them, right, if you think about the village, next slide, if you think about the village that they live in, can you go back to the other slide? Now just keep going back and forth. Village, that's probably, that's probably what that bathroom really looked like to them, right? Like why would I use that? When for centuries we've we've just been doing it this way, you know. All right. So he's like, okay, if you're not using it because it's too nice, right? And uh, but it, some more stuff started to surface as he's doing this study, right? Next slide. So certain things again. These people have lived in these villages for centuries, right? Generational habits. Their family has been going and using the restroom in the same spot for generation after generation after generation after generation, right? The social norms, nobody else was using them, right? Nobody else was using those new fancy bathrooms. We're just going to keep doing what we've always done. That doesn't fix nothing, does it? Not understanding the second and third order impacts of using the bathroom like they have for generations and generations and generations, right? Water runoff. When it rains, where's the water go? It goes in and pollutes the, the groundwater, right? And then the ingrained poverty part, right? There, there's this piece where they're just happy to be alive. You give the kid a stick, they're going to play. Right, how many people have seen like a video on the internet or whatever with like a, a, a kid playing a set of drums with like a spack on bucket and a bucket and you know a couple different things or you know um, just the very simplest things make these people happy, right? They don't know any other, they don't know anything else, right? They just know what they know. Or, and they don't know what they don't know. So, 
this guy starts thinking, he's like, you know what? How am I going to get these people to understand that they have to change their behaviors? If they can change their behaviors, we can start to increase and move the needle and help them with their quality of life and their health and start on an upward trajectory of a higher quality of life. But how do I get there? How do I break generations and generations and generations of this is the way I've always done it? And he said, you know what? I'm going to pull the village together. Next slide. So he pulls the village together. But before he does that, he makes this elaborate sand table. right? In the military, before we go and we do big operations, we usually build this mock simulated uh, scaled down version of a city that we're going to go in and destroy. Right? So... <laughs> So he goes and he builds this complete replica on the ground of this, this village. And he brings everyone in and he circles them up. Have a seat. And he starts talking to them. He said, okay. We have a problem with health. And I'm like, yeah? And he said, we've been invested uh, with these these bathrooms, you're not using them. I said, you know, uh, you guys are reluctant to use them, but I need you guys to understand the, the importance of this. And he gets a bag of flour. Next slide. A little bag of flour, and he gives it to each family. Every family. And he says, okay, what I need you to do is go and figure out where your house is on this map. And he helps them get oriented, to go around and cover down on each spot, okay? And they said, all right. And he starts asking questions. He said, all right, where do you go to the bathroom? Point to it, and then take some flour and sprinkle it on the ground, okay? Where, where does this member of your family go? Sprinkle it, sprinkle it, sprinkle it. Next family, sprinkle it, sprinkle it. Yeah, you go through the whole family, right? I said, okay. Now, what about when it's dark out? That was going to day. Where do you go to the bathroom when it's dark? Repeats the process. They go through, they sprinkle flour on the ground. They said, okay, what about when it's cold, when it's raining, you know, inclement weather? Mark where you guys all use the bathroom. Next thing you know, you guys can imagine what that map looks like, right? It looks like snow, right? It's covered. Now, you guys got to bear with me here. He takes a glass, opens up a brand new bottle of water, got it from RCPC's cafe. <laughs> pours it in the water, takes a nice sip, hands it to somebody else, they take a sip, they take a sip, said okay. Then he pulls a hair out. Oh. Ouch, that hurt. <laughs> he has a plate. He's got feces on it. Uh. He takes that one single hair. One hair. And he dips it in the poop. And then he takes that glass of water and he stirs that hair and he hands it to the village elder. He said, take a sip. He said, no. Take a sip. Anyone? Nobody wants to have a sip of water. Imagine that. So... He says, well, one hair in this human feces, and you don't want to drink, you don't even want to take a sip of water. Flies have six legs. Next slide. Imagine where your family's going and doing their business, and all these flies, and they're coming in, and you guys aren't going to look at flies the same way. After the service. <laughs> he said, flies have six feet. 
Imagine what's happening every single time a fly lands on your food, on your face, on your, you know, in your water, right? And then think about where your water is and when it rains. Where's all this flour going to wash to? It's going to contaminate and poison your drinking water. They tripped over the truth, right? What this gentleman did was he sat there and framed this amazing, he weaved generations and centuries worth of, you know, ingrained habits, social norms uh, into a story to help them understand that they have to make a change or their quality of life isn't going to improve. Now, what's that got to do with church service? Nah. Glad you asked, Roberta. Glad you asked, girl. Next slide, please. So, what is sin? At the very beginning, I give us our task and purpose, right? We have inherited sin, we have imputed sin, and we have personal sin, right? Somebody's taking notes. Uh, so, Let's talk about the original sin. What is original sin? Where did original sin come from? <laughs> right? All right. So we can speed through this lesson, right? So everybody knows where original sin came from. Next slide, please. You know, as a result of Adam's sin, we all enter the world with a fallen nature. All of us. Every single one. The sinful tendencies, desires, and dispositions in our hearts with which we are all born. Something inherent in us, it is a morally ruined character. The original sin that we are all born with manifests itself throughout our lives in actual sins, in actions, thoughts, and feelings we have that violated God's moral commands. Our sinful hearts, original sin, cause us to make sinful choices, think sinful thoughts, and feel sinful feelings. Does that make y'all feel any better? No, no it doesn't. That's <laughs> not why everyone's doing it. Yeah. Everybody was, was using a bathroom inside that village too, right? And it was poisoning them. So original sin. Scripture. This is this is the scripture that's going to back that up. Okay? Next slide. Original sin is what caused David to write, Surely I was sinful at birth. Sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Psalms 51.5 Genesis 8. Verse 21. And when the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of man. For the intentions of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I ever again strike down every living creature as I have done. Amen. All right. Do we, do we have at least enough to, to, I mean, pretty much everyone nailed it right out of starting blocks, right? Like, hey, Adam messed up big time in, in the Garden of Eden, right? And we are inheriting his sin, right? Yeah. Now, this imputed sin piece kind of tripped me up a little bit because it, it's, it feels like it's kind of the same thing at, at first glance, right? It's like, okay, imputed sin. And then... You know, I broke it down. I said, all right, well, i got to figure out first what the heck imputed means. Okay, so next slide. All right. Imputed, in the very first part, says to lay the responsibility or blame for something, often falsely or unjustly, on some, something or someone else. Right? Number two, to credit or ascribe something to a person or a cause. Hmm. Impute. Lay the responsibility on us, right? Adam messed up, and we're, we're 
We're reaping Adam's actions, right? We're, we're reaping the, the, the fall of mankind still based on Adam's actions and Eve's in the garden. So, I'm like, all right, well, it was starting to come together, right? Um, so these are, these are some of the things that, that pulled it together when I was trying to figure this out. Next slide. The guilt of Adam's sin is credited not just to Adam himself, but to all of us. We are regarded as having sinned in Adam and hence as deserving of the same punishment. Guilty by association. Right? <laughs> kind of like a Rico. <laughs> uh, Alright. We not only receive polluted and sinful natures because of Adam's sin, but we are also regarded as having sin in Adam such that we are guilty of his act as well. Lastly, imputed sin is the ruin of our standing before God and is thus not an internal quality, but an objective reckoning of guilt. Let me say that one again. An objective reckoning of guilt. Hmm. I underlined that because I wanted to dig a little bit more into... I mean, that sounded pretty, pretty intense, right? So it's okay, objective. In the military, we have objectives, right? It's a uh, specific point on a map. And we're going to go there, and, and that's typically our goal, is to close with and seize uh, enemy uh, key terrain from the enemy, right? So, but then objective could also mean expressing or dealing with facts or conditions as perceived without distortion by personal feelings, prejudice, or interpretations. Or, B... Limited to choices of fixed alternatives and reducing subjective factors to a minimum. Wow, that's a mouthful, right? Go back up to A, right? It's, it's pretty succinct, right? Expressing or dealing with facts, period, right? Or conditions as perceived without distortion by personal feelings, prejudice, or interpretations, right? So what does that really mean? If I were... To say the word Rolex and flash a picture up on the screen, what's what immediately comes to your mind? Money, Money right? Quality. I can't afford one, right? <laughs> Things like that. But I think everyone in here, for the most part, knows exactly what a Rolex watch is. And without any other debate, you know that's an expensive quality timepiece, right? Take that and flip the script and think of the complete opposite, right? When it comes to that objective thought, right? Or, or um, the, the imputed piece, right? Like you're sitting here and you are guilty, right? Can you go back? Let's dig into that. No, one more. Okay, objective reckoning of guilt, right? Just like you looked at that timepiece and said, wow, God is looking at us and thinking about what happened in the Garden of Eden and saying, wow. Fast forward a couple slides. So this is where it gets really interesting. This is where I had my aha moment today in my office. Romans 5, 15 through 18 says, but the gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died by the trespass of the one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to many? Nor can the gift of God be compared with the result of one man's sin. The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation, but the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. For if by the trespass of the one man, 
death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provisions of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? Consequently, just as one trespasses resulted, one person's trespasses resulted in condemnation for all people, so also one righteous act resulted in the justification and life for all people. That, I read that probably ten different times. If one man can mess up, in all these generations, like how do you, you sit there and you think, why am I paying for Adam's actions? But then you sit there and you think about Jesus Christ dying on that cross and absorbing all of our sin. That absolutely blew me away, man. And, and I said, you know what? If there's not, if we run over on time and we get to this point. And I just shut it down. That's cool. But we're going to keep going. All right? So, I think the personal sin part, I think everyone pretty much understands this one. All right? Personal sin is the voluntary violation of a known law of God by a morally responsible person. So, there's, there's two parts of that, right? Commission and omission. Romans 3.23, I have a tattooed on my arm, says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All. That's commission. We're committing, right, the commission, and then you have omission. James 4.17 points out, anyone then who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it, also sins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> Alright. So, what what does the story I have to have, what, what does the story that I talked about in Bangladesh with the flower have to do with those three types of sin? Right? So, excellent. So, if you take your generational habits you take your social norms you think about your second and third order impacts and your mindset our mindset right and you take that flower And you hold it and you look at it, all right? Let's put a pen there. Next slide. If we do not see our sin like those villagers saw what they were doing, we do not see the need to be saved. They didn't see it until they tripped over the truth, until it was right in their face. If we do not see our sin, we do not see the need for self-improvement. I'm perfect. We can always be better Christians, right? Yes. Always. So, what I'd like to do is, I have... Next slide. I'll just show you. So, think about this. Think, think about a village your village and think about the relationships in that village and where you sit and spring a little flower. Think about your family, the way you talk to people, the way you treat strangers, your habits, your finances, work, thoughts, desires, and sprinkle some flower where you sin in those areas. And then, think about the things that you struggle with, right? Like, they had to change in atmosphere. What about when it's dark? What about when it's cold? What about when it's raining? 
right? What about when I'm intoxicated? What about when I'm angry? What about when I'm poor? Where is that flower at now? What does your village look like? Does it look like Alaska? In the dead of winter? Right? No. We've all sinned. We all sin. But here's the thing. Next slide. We are not sinners because we sin. We sin because we are sinners. Right? R.C. Sproul's, man, when I read that, I read it like, again, 10, 15 different times. I was like, whoa. It's not scripture. But it's true. We are, in, we inherited Adam's sin, imputed sin, and our personal sin. We are sinners, and sinners sin. Period. So, you know, it's again one of those things that if I can help you. Identify those areas where you have flour in your village. And perhaps, just perhaps, you see that you too can quit poisoning yourself and others, right? Because think about it. That village was not just, it wasn't just poisoning my family, it was poisoning everyone. So Romans 9 and 10 or excuse me, Romans 10, 9 through 10. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by, it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. I'm going to make this real easy. Next slide. Please, everyone, let's recite, recite this. Dear Lord, Dear Lord Jesus, Jesus, I know that I am a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died on me for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. So, look, this pretty much concludes. And Jen, if you want to come up, please. Uh, so, pretty much on time at 7.35, okay? And uh, I, I appreciate the opportunity. It is a true blessing to be able to come up here and spend a little bit of time and go over things that you know God puts on my heart to share with you all. Because really, at the end of the day, like you say, iron sharpens iron. We can always be a better Christian, and we can sit here and, and you know again, if we can sit there and identify the sin in our life and where it is and how it's impacting uh, not just us but the people around us, perhaps we might be able to make a course correction and not only improve our quality of life while we're here on this planet. But also when we get up to heaven and we, uh, you know, we're um, brought to judgment, right? And um, yeah, good stuff, good stuff right? All right, yeah, then come on up. Thanks, Bobby. Thank Good evening, church. We have a whole list of people that need prayer, and we have some really heavy prayers. So I'm asking you to get your faith together, to give me some grace. It's going to be some hard ones here, but we're going to pray, and we're going to trust that God's going to hear our prayers, right? Amen. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, tonight we come in the name of your Son. Father God, we have friends, we have family members, we have brothers and sisters, we have loved ones. God, they are calling out to you tonight who need you, Father.
Tonight I start with the list, God. We have, um, God, I'm calling out for Deb. I'm calling out for Marty. I'm calling out for Big Dog. I'm asking you for Rex, for Sandy, for Mama D, for Papa D, for Kyler, for Lexi, for Anita, for Mike, and for Bruce's family. Father, all of those others that are in our hearts right now that may not be here, God, there's some really heavy things going on right now, sickness and, and um, struggles, financial situations, Lord, things that can only be corrected by the grace and the power of Jesus. So, Father, tonight we ask you, Lord God, you know every situation in every life that I just mentioned, God, and others that are online, God, that are in our hearts, you know every one of their situations, you know every struggle, God, you know every heartache, every loss, every sickness, every disease, every battle with sin. God, the pain that people are going through, the words that have been spoken. Father, you understand the financial situations, the hardships that people are battling right now. God, the miracles that need to happen right now, this very moment, in the name of Jesus. King Jesus, we call on you, Father. We ask you, Jesus, for a divine healing. God, for those who are battling with sickness, and, and tonight we're calling right now, God, for divine healing and miracles in the area of cancer, Father. God, we ask and declare that every one of those cancer cells would come under the authority of the blood of Jesus Christ. We pray that those cancer cells would be delivered from our friends, our family, our brothers, our sisters, our loved ones. God, heal their body with a divine touch from heaven. The blood of Jesus, as we just heard, is powerful. We know that you can break the chains of sickness and sin and disease and cancer can be broken by the blood of Jesus Christ. We have the faith to believe it tonight, God. So we ask you, Father, to bring healing in the bodies of those who are battling with cancer, God. Those who are suffering with loss right now, we pray the comfort of Holy Spirit. God, we call you in right now for Kyler. We call you right now in for Bruce's family, God. There are others who are battling um, loss, God. Even in my family, someone lost a long, long, long loved pet, God. And that that concerns you. The pain that, you, that they feel, even losing a family member, a pet, God, these things concern you. So we ask for the comfort of Holy Spirit to come to those who need you tonight, Father. We ask you, God, for Anita's son. Her son was in an accident last night. The injuries are moderate, but the truck is trashed, and he'll be out of work, and he needs a financial breakthrough. He needs healing, God, and we need you to align all those things in Chris's life, God. We ask for salvation for our friends and family members, for our loved ones, God. We ask you that you would put, uh, that you would open their hearts, that you would make their hardened hearts soft to the word of God, that they would hear Holy Spirit call them to you, Lord Jesus, God, that they would receive you as their Lord and their Savior, God, that you would not just save them, God, but they would make you Lord of their life so that they would be delivered from addictions. Delivered from sin, Father God. We need to go a step further and say, God, we call in on you right now for deliverance from addictions, God. We're calling you for deliverance, God, that you would heal people right now, that you would give them a sound mind in their bodies, in their minds, Lord God. That you would heal their minds, give them a sound mind, God. You, Jesus Christ, are the one that brings peace to us. You settle our soul, you calm our storm. So those who are battling with addictions, who are battling with, with um, God, who are fighting with depression, who are fighting with anxiety and fear and, and suicidal thoughts, we call the name of Jesus down right now into every one of those situations and we pray that you would deliver them, that you would be the anchor of their soul that would heal them from that sickness in their bodies, God, that sickness in their mind, that spiritual sickness, bring healing to them right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. God, we ask you to bring grace and mercy to us in our country, God, in, our, in, in, the, in this world, God, globally. We need you to move. God, we need you to move. God, we need you to open the hearts of the lost ones and bring a boldness upon your church to speak your gospel with truth, with power, with life, with the authority that you've expected us as a church to stand and speak your gospel, God. We ask you to teach us, to educate us, God, to impart into us, to equip us, God, the power of the Holy Spirit that gives us the word, just like you did with the disciples. You gave them the power to speak the gospel with strength and with power that would break every chain when the gospel is spoken with power. So God, give us that ability to do that. God, give us that power. Use us. We're here. We're vessels. 
disciples were available and we say, use us, God. Bike week's coming, Lord. People need you. They, they're in a dark, dark place. And so they need to see the light of Jesus yeah. Christ shining through your church. And we're here and we're available, God. And we're going out to the mission field. So equip us, protect us, yeah. give us words that would speak right to the heart of those, God, that would penetrate to the bone and the marrow. That's what your word does. So God, give us the, the ability to speak clarity, to speak boldly and to speak powerfully to break every chain of bondage upon the people that we see god you can do that holy spirit you can do that we trust you we ask you to impart us god with that wisdom those words that would see people come to the knowledge the saving grace and the knowledge of jesus christ the savior god bring revival to daytona god let this be like a, a no other bike week that we've ever seen before god take these streets for yourself god we we say jesus christ is king over daytona beach we say jesus christ is king over Volusia county we say jesus christ is king over the state of florida god you come and bring the revival you come and bring revival awaken your church awaken these grounds awaken these people to the word of god and save the very souls that need to be saved father god we praise you we give you all the glory and we trust you jesus Amen. Amen. All right. Well, that's it. Um, let's close out in the Lord's Prayer, and then we're, we're out of here. Dear Father God, thank you for tonight. Thank you for redemption we invite the church, Lord. Thank you for blessing us and giving us this opportunity to be a light um, for the Barker community in Daytona Beach, Lord. We ask that you keep a hedge of protection around Frankie and Heather as they travel back. Keep a hedge of protection around all the bikers out there, Lord. Get them all home, save the sound of their families. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good night, y'all. Thank you.